basis. We don't have many renters in there. Uh, people next door to me just moved in today, and I haven't even met them, and I'm sure they're very nice people. But it's always good to know that there was, was an the application address? submitted and background checks are done, because you just never know. That we always do that. That we do. Yeah. What's the address on that, Glenn? Well, I'm at 23379, so they're seven, the house seven, right there. 77. 77? Yeah. Right Let there. me look into it. And again, and again the, it's not a big deal. I'm no, no, but it is. It, no, it is because basically that's the only way that I have that information. If it's not on file, if I don't have the application, then they are in violation. In violation I had the business. owner call me once just to get an idea of what his house was worth, mm -hmm. and I told him. And then the renters that were in place, I think he, the rent was, uh, and he did a rent increase. It was too high, and so they moved. And um, I emailed him about three days ago to let him know, not to be a nosy neighbor, but his grass looked like it was dying. And I believe the circuit breaker that runs his pump was turned off, as was his air conditioner. And I just didn't want to see mildew at yeah, all. Sure. And the next day, actually, uh, yesterday, I saw that it was back on. Again. Let me look into it. But again, uh, basically, yes, when we do, there's an application. The background check is done. All of that is done. I look and see if there's any cats or animals and what kind of vehicles they're actually driving. Because if I see a truck in there, at least I give them advance notice of where it has to be. So yes, but if, if someone is not following it, then they would of course be in violation. Uh, it's good that you speak up, exactly. and everybody it's should. Okay. Uh, it doesn't mean you're being a rat, a no. nosy neighbor. We, we gotta know what's going on. And that's Basically the, the letter way. just says, it's come to my attention that you may be renting your right. home and, and things like that, so. Yeah. Anybody else have any? Yes. The Vaux property, is that just in the book? Oh, man. No, no. <laughs> don't even bring it up. I'm ready. I, I, I don't even want to Yeah, start. I had 10 calls from him today, so yeah, I know. You know what? We just found out today that Diane, who's at Richard DeBose, is no longer with the company. So on she Tuesday, I know. So on Tuesday, my last email to her, because we were, we've been corresponding, she did contact the bank. She has been calling the bank. She's left three messages, okay? Finally on Tuesday I said, well one, I didn't get the money, it's the 1% or 12 months that's owed on the property because the bank took over. Number two, what can we legally do with this already? What needs to be done? You know, because I don't know. I, I don't, you know, I can't take legal action. We've been asking on this. And it's like, what can we do? You know, I'll call the bank every day. The people that, the number that they provided to us when me and Teresa were calling, they're actually the property management for the bank. It's not the bank itself, it's the property management. So they don't care, okay, they don't care. So we're, me and Bill, we were discussing today, I did then send an email, a little bit of a nasty email to Richard, that I would think that it's out of consideration, we've been paying for this, that you could at least tell us what's going on. And if Diane is not there, I have no problem with that issue, but someone else should have been handling the case then. Same thing with, with Mr. Thornton, you know, who is still at Richard DeBose's office, so we're waiting. But the house is empty now? No, no, no it's not well, empty. We don't know. It's the sure is the park, I don't know if they're using it as a parking lot and crashing there uh, between workday certain people, but they, they have this uh, uh, vi uh, pickup truck registered to a company in Tennessee striping, uh, Pope striping, yep. Tennessee plate, I forget the plate down. The cops won't do anything. Nope. If I say there's an abandoned uh, truck in the, in the driveway, they, I've had them there a couple of times, wasted a morning. Uh, supposedly the person that I spoke to, the Richard, and I don't have his last name in front of me, supposedly he is the partner of Mr. Vo. This is where Mr. Vo tried to do that quick claim deed under, under the you know, table. I got his number, he's never called me back. When I did speak to him, I said, do you know that, no, we have no idea who you are. You have no right to be there. Um, he goes, well, you know, he's my partner. Let me be talking to him. Never got back to me, you know. So we need to find out what we can possibly do. And until the bank doesn't sell, we can't go through this anymore. You know, something has to be done, period. It's like you can't find it. Who are you gonna find? Well, I, I don't know find. if the bank bought the, the debt yeah. or, or actually, you know, has the house and is trying to sell it. Obviously, it, it, you know, they don't care. Uh, I wanted them to come and change the locks on the door and get, get these people out of here. And then uh, I was optimistic because uh, Teresa said there was a U-Haul truck there and we, yeah, we thought they were getting everything out.
don't know it. And then, okay, there was a car in the driveway, so uh, all right, it's a car. Now it's a big pickup truck. So we don't know if they're actually working inside, and it really doesn't matter anymore. We just really need to know who is the owner and what actions we can take against that owner. Okay. True, but I can't deal with the property management. I think that, you know, that's why I was being strong with Diane, that we need to enforce either a, an eviction or threaten them with an eviction if someone doesn't answer us. Well, we can't evict them. No. no it's it's got to be the bank. It's, it's just the bank. Right. The bank is, but, not you know, for, is not in the real estate business, so they don't care. Well, you know what? Uh, once we find out the information, uh, there are associations that you may do an eviction. When an association does it, it's called an injunctment, okay? For example, if the owner doesn't take no action, we, the association, may do so, okay? It's about $2,500 from, from the beginning to the end, but it's a nine-month process, okay? So it's always best that the owner does the eviction because the laws between the landlord and renter is much different than it is from our documents to do the eviction. I, I, to my knowledge, you can foreclose on them if they haven't been paying the that's assessments. Different. That's totally different. Well, yes. what about that? A foreclosure based on the fact that, that we're not getting any Well, assessment. the thing that's what I'm waiting for, because I don't know out of that money is because if we, I don't know if we want all of it, or did they do the safe harbor where we only get 1% or 12 months. I don't know any of this. This is what I'm all waiting for us, our they attorney, are, to tell us. Yeah. All, right. all right. Well, yeah. so he's back when? Next week? Next week. But I already emailed the lady that he told me to email. So we're going to have to be patient, I guess. There's not too much else we can do about it. There's not too much legal thing we can do about it. But. All right, any other I questions? Have a, I have a question. What's the procedure with this new booklet that we came out with uh, for renters? Do we give them to the renters or to the home owner? Well, the owner. Owner, it gets uh, the oh, your. And all your documents, everything that we do goes to the owner. Mm -hmm. The owner then is responsible. However, what I do from the office, if I know it's rented, I do give them a copy. Yeah, just to they should have it so they know what's going on yeah. anyway, but yeah. it's the owner's yeah. ultimate yeah. responsibility. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but I have extra books if anybody I have has. already, I have it in my computer, I have it in the file, right. and I have two hard copies. Right. So when the renters do come in, I give it to them just so they can have it. Okay. Is it on the website yet? Can they, can we download it from the website? I will put it on the website. I'll put it on. I'll put it on. Well, and this is not like an informal uh, booklet, but uh, is it um, the obligation or, or um, not the obligation maybe so much, but it is the responsibility of a uh, realtor to supply a new homeowner with the declarations and bylaws? No. Uh, whenever they buy a home? No. It's the responsibility of the listing agent to listing provide agent. to the buyer's agent all the rules and regulations, the financials, the, the current reserves, everything. They have to get that to them within three days of a executed contract. But that's not, but that's not the HOA documents. Usually, what happens with that mark is your HOA documents that you have. It's usually coming from the previous owner. The owner will give his documents. I give you what you need. I give that to yeah. all the realtors. <coughs> but to answer your question, it is the responsibility of the previous owner to give those documents. Okay. If they do not get it, then you can always get it from the title company. Okay? I believe it's $105 or whatever they charge for the documents. It depends on your relationship, too. I give them for free. Mm. Depends. You can get it from, uh, if they're online at Lee County, you, yeah. know, you can get it from there. Okay? Yeah. Um, so there's ways of getting it. So again, when they close, all this is where they check off. Yes, I did receive right, it. Right, right. So, but one way or the other, they are the owner. It really goes back to the owner, the previous owner, yeah. to give that. Now, when it comes to bank foreclosures, obviously the owner is not there. So then I provide them with the, okay. with the documents. Right. But a uh, so so a uh, person buying into our community can actually sidestep. Uh, the receipt of those bylaws by simply saying no one gave them to me no, and therefore no. I wasn't aware that no. I couldn't park no. a truck. Ignorance of the law. No, well, you could, okay. you could, you really, need, they really need to get them. I had a situation over at Coconut Shores mm -hmm. where the uh, buyers backed out. I was representing both buyers and sellers. Oh. And it's sticky. Mm -hmm. And um, they took legal action saying that, well, we decided that uh, 
we didn't know that you couldn't plant plantings around the outside. And they said, well, you did because it's in the, um, uh, the rules and regulations. Right. Well, they were missing one document, which was a frequently asked questions, the FAQs, and their lawyer got them out of the deal because that one document was no missing. Kidding. Those lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they probably paid five grand. Yeah. It, but, but yeah, but um, that's, that, you know, that's what happened. But most people, they want to know that the uh, Right. Oh, of course. Right. And that gets back to two. They're also supposed to get an estoppel letter, the title company. Which is what I get. Management exactly. To make sure there's no liens. Exactly. Right. Or judgments against yep. that property. So that's what you have to that's do, Susie, do. Is, is in other words, all supply them and make sure they have all the documents that they are supposed I supply to. all the information on the okay. estoppel and okay. it's all verification of what, if there's anything owed, I have to put the amount that's owed, right. how often it's paid, um, uh, uh, da, 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 till when is it paid. Um, some of the estoppels are three pages, some are just one page, so it all depends, but I put in every single detail that's in there. Mm -hmm. so. Anything else? No? All right. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. I second uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. I'll second it. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.